So today we're going to be finally building the Scout 34 PCB edition. I've waited a very long time to get this video up because I wanted to make sure everything was ready to go before releasing it. So that means that the firmware is now in QMK on both the configurator as well as the actual main repo. You can download the firmware on my website. You can buy this board on my website if you want to build it yourself. Everything's pretty much solid and ready to go there. And this is the board. This is the Scout 34 PCB edition. This is basically the evolution of the original Scout 34, which was the handwired variant. And it's pretty much become my favorite board that I've designed because the 18 by 17 millimeter chalk switches feel really nice to type on. I actually really enjoy gaming on them too, which I might make a video talking about that. The exposed controller, the low profile of the board, just pretty much everything with it, with either the PCB version or the handwired version, they're basically the same. I just really enjoy using it. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna actually build Build the board. We're not going to really talk too much about PCB stuff, but this is kind of also my intro that I'm going to be having a PCB series coming out soon, so stay tuned for that. And this board does use surface mount components, which might make a few people afraid. But I promise you by the end of this video, you will no longer be afraid of them because they're very simple to use. I'll have some really nice close-ups to show you kind of what's going on there. And without anything else to say here, let's just dive in and build the board. So we're going to be building the white variant today, which here is the PCB. And this is the backside. And I really just wanted to show it off because I'm very proud of how I got everything on this with the very clean diode markers and the very clean silk screen for the Pico in the middle there. This is the front of the board. It's completely blank. Most of this will be hidden anyway when you're actually using the board. It's going to be covered up with the switches and the controller. But this is the PCB. And what I'm going to do first to build this is we just have to solder all the diodes on. So the steps for this is basically solder all the diodes on, solder the sockets on, and then we mount the controller. So a little bit backwards to how I normally build boards where I do the controller first. And the reason for that is if you put the controller on first, it'd be rocking back and forth when you try to solder anything else on it. So we're going to do the diodes. I'm going to set up my macro rig so we can take a look at how these are done. And I'll be back in just a moment. So here we are now with an extreme close-up of the PCB. And I'm just going to start by showing you how to solder one diode. And once you see how to do one, I apologize for the camera in the way here because this is how I'm doing the macro thing but once you know how to do one you'll understand how to do them all so what we're going to start with is i'm just going to grab a diode and i'm going to bring it in here and you can see that this diode is next to the pad now and all you're going to want to do is take note of the position on the pcb which is this line here and align that with the diode marking this will be helpful if you have something like a magnifying glass because these are pretty small first thing you want to do is you want to grab a flux pen and you want to add a little bit of flux to one pad on the pcb then you're going to come in with your iron and apply some heat to that pad and then slowly bring in some solder and then run it across the pad next you're going to take your diode and bring it into place and make sure the markings align and then simply bring it to the pad and apply a little bit of heat with your iron let go of the heat and that diode is now connected. Next, you're going to flux the other pad that hasn't been soldered yet. Then you're simply going to bring in a little bit of heat, put some solder on the iron and the pad, and then that's it. Your diode is now connected. What you can do at this point is bring in a little bit more solder on both pads. You don't have to do this, but it can just make it connect a little better. And that's now a fully connected diode. You can see that both pads are connected, and you can see all this nasty stuff on the PCB. That's leftover flux, and what we're going to do to clean that off is simple. We're just going to take a Q-tip, and we're going to put a little isopropyl alcohol on it, and we can just simply scrub away the leftover flux. We'll soak it up with the other end. That's a completely soldered diode on there. The marking aligns with the PCB. And I'm just going to go through now and time lapse through the rest of it, because once you know how to do one of them, you know how to do them all. So I'm going to do all the diodes, and I'll be back in a moment, and we'll start talking about how to do the sockets, because they're basically the same process. It's just a little bit more solder involved. So I've now finished all the diodes. As you can see, they're all on the board. And honestly, the hardest part about them, because they are so tiny, is finding the indication on the diode of where it should be positioned on the board. I recommend having something like this, which is just a magnifying glass, so you can kind of look a little bit better. But once you find that orientation of the diode, it's pretty simple from there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to do the sockets next. So putting a socket on the board is actually easier than the diodes. All we have to do is take a flux pen and flux both pads where the socket will sit. Then we'll simply take our socket and put it into the holes on the PCB, apply some heat with our iron, bring in some solder, and you'll see it flow right into the socket there. Do the same on the other end. Then just like before, take a Q-tip with some isopropyl and clean it off. Your socket is now soldered onto your board. I'm just gonna go through now and do every single one on the board because they're all the same process. I'm gonna time-lapse through this. Everything 
getting soldered onto the back and there's a ton of leftover flux. You can clean that off with isopropyl if you want to. I'm not going to because I'm lazy and it won't cause any issue if you don't. It just doesn't look as nice. What we have to do now is connect the controller into the middle. And I'm going to just use a green Raspberry Pi Pico with a micro USB. This is just your typical Pico, but I do also offer on my website this 16 megabyte Pi Pico with a USB-C and then it also has an RGB LED, which is very bright. You can easily blind yourself with it. And I've done it a few times myself, but it's nice for stuff like indicators of layers or like if caps lock is on. So it's a nice thing to have, but I'm just going to use the green one here because I think it will look good. And I'm going to be connecting it with pin socket headers. Now pin socket headers I've used in tons of my videos before. And they're really nice because you basically don't permanently bind that controller to that board. So you can swap it out if you need to. Cool thing with this one is I could actually swap this green one over to my blackboard if I wanted to, or put this one on here because the firmware is the same. Everything's the same on them. It's just a different board. This is just through hole soldering. So it's super easy to connect. And I'm just going to do that really quick. There's the completed board and you can see that it doesn't actually have the case on it, and that's because it's designed in such a way that it works as just a PCB. So it keeps it super low profile, but I do also offer a case and I'm going to be putting mine in this case in a second. I did manage to flash the firmware on it. And basically all you do with these Raspberry Pis to flash the firmware is you hold the button while plugging it in. The firmware is on QMK. It's on the configurator if you want to just configure it there. And then also on my website on the blog post, there's firmware you can download that are pre-compiled and basically just drag and drop it into it because it detects as a drive on the computer. Super simple to do. But with that said, I'm going to assemble this really quick into this case, and then we'll be back in a second to do a typing test, and then we'll be done. That's my first PCB keyboard, the Scotto 34 PCB edition. We have it here in white with the green controller and then the fully blacked out one here. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I really like this board. I'm probably gonna be rocking the red one for a while. I kind of like the red switches too. They're not too bad. Other than that, like I mentioned a few times in this video, if you want to buy one and build it yourself, links in the description. And then also this is my introduction to my PCB series. So I'm going to be covering how to design PCBs, the software, how to order them, all that good stuff related to them coming very soon. It's going to be about a six episode series. I don't really have much else to say here other than if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.